hi sweeties how are you all doing thank you all so much for all the love and support you will shower me here with please do not forget to subscribe and smash the thumb up so today we'll be talking something very important and it's about a video uh, a Persian American woman made I mean saying that uh, America is seeing what it's going on in Palestine and thinking that something like this is not going to happen to them right and then I was like, wait, where have you been? It looks like you don't even know what is happening because the same thing that is going on in Palestine has happened to African Americans and the indigenous people. If you think I am lying, check out the Tulsa, Oklahoma, Rosewood, and some other, uh, other black communities that were burned down during the mass, uh, the massacre that they call race riot that happened, right? And then black people have been telling these people all this while. Nothing with all these people is that they do not listen to black people when black people speak. And then when it start happening to them, they come out, they want to talk about it. And then when you look around, you find out that black people are likely to die during childbirth, right? That doesn't mean that pump colored people, it is not happening to them. It is not happening. It is also happening to them, but they would rather stay back in their closet and not come out to talk about it. And then end up like blaming black people or calling black people to come and help them speak on their own behalf. Who does that? Let's get into this. Americans kind of look at what's happening in Palestine and in the Middle East and they think to themselves like, oh, that's happening over there. That can never happen here. And it kind of allows them to turn a blind eye. But my question to Americans is, what do you guys think gentrification is? What do you guys think Cop City is about? Gentrification is a symptom of colonization right like in america we're taught that if you own a house if you own land if you own property then you're untouchable like no one can take that from you but that's far from the truth right how many communities have been completely rooted out because hedge fund billionaires wanted to buy up their block to build a stadium a mall a luxury apartment building or hotel this happens so often here in america right and it usually happens like this they'll pay you know your neighbors a nice sum to kind of buy them out and people will take the offer and then for the people who are kind of resistance and resistant and people who are like no i i just pretty much am done paying my mortgage i don't want to leave what they'll do is they'll send the city and state after you and suddenly you're up to here with legal fees and you you simply cannot go up against a billion dollar hedge fund you're just like some nine to five guy you know you're just trying to feed your family and then finally you decide to settle because you can't afford this and then just to fuck with you because you wasted their time and you prolonged their project they'll offer you half of what they originally offered just to fuck with you what do you guys think cop city is about all these cops are coming to atlanta to this facility in atlanta to train who's teaching them who's trading tactics with them who has been trading tactics with the police in America for the past couple decades? Think, think. Gaza was a test city. It was a test city that was funded by the U.S. Palestinians know that their oppressor is not Israel. Their oppressor is America. Israel is the occupation. If America is their oppressor, then that means we live in the belly of the beast. Americans kind of look at what's happening in Palestine and in the Middle East and they think to themselves So can I keep it real with y'all? Like can I keep it 100? Y'all don't pay attention to black folks. Y'all don't listen to black folks and you damn sure don't know the history of what has happened generationally over the last hundreds of years in the USA. Now this is not speaking to that creator because her point is valid and she is speaking on the parallels between gentrification in the US and what is happening in Palestine with the occupation. Now what I'm about to say is not for the purpose of division. It's not even for the purpose of pointing fingers. It is for the purpose of us acknowledging specifically as people who identify themselves of color that if we don't align ourselves together now when are we going to do it? I personally, in my heart of hearts, believe everybody should be going hard on the peg for Palestine. 
and also for the Congo, and also for Haiti, and also for Tigray and Sudan, and the backyards of your home. Chicago, DC, LA, Flint, Detroit, the boroughs of New York City. It shouldn't have taken this for you to question your elected officials. Our criminal justice system here should have had you doing that. And before George Floyd, black people have been telling y'all for generations are food, water, air, poisoned. And everybody goes about their business. After 911, y'all demonized Muslims so bad that y'all weren't even checking for the fact that there was a World Trade Center BOM being in 1993. And had you picked up them breadcrumbs, it would have led you to the promised land. And on the flip side of that, especially me being a black Muslim woman, it's interesting now to see so many Muslims out here protesting, doing the things, because that's what we're supposed to do, specifically Islamically. We are supposed to stand up for truth. But when BLM was happening, I remember a lot of y'all religious leaders, and I'm going to say y'all religious leaders because they're not leading me nowhere, was saying that it was haram to protest. But it's not now. When Biden sent back those Haitian people who are under a bridge in Texas, we should have been in an uproar. In 2016, Obama said that he would not rest until the water in Flint, Michigan was safe to drink and cook with. Flint still has contaminated water and Jackson, Mississippi and Baltimore, Maryland and Hawaii. You should not be just now questioning where your tax dollars are going, especially knowing that those go to private prisons and the most people that are impacted by the prison systems are black men, black women and black children. And had we been more diligent with the problems that we have right in our own backyard, there is no way that they could continue to do the things that they are doing in Palestine, in Congo, Haiti, in Sudan, and the list goes on. Americans kind of look at what's happening in Palestine and in the Middle East and they think to themselves. Now, and this is the thing that really pisses me off with people is with people who like you can sometimes tell when people don't actually listen to black people or, or people who live in America and actually faces these issues in America. Because when y'all first start hearing about these issues, y'all try to act like, oh, it's all Americans doing this. This is shit I hate about. This is the shit I hate about people who who you can tell don't be listening to black people in the first place. Because y'all sit right here and y'all y'all hear something and y'all act like oh this is something new or this is something that all Americans don't even talk about. That is that that is that for for one. Specify who the hell y'all talking about. Y'all try too motherfucking hard to stay on the side of white people that y'all don't even want to specify white people anymore when it comes to certain shit y'all don't want to specify white americans when it comes to certain shit y'all want to sit right here and, oh yeah americans 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 it's not americans it's white americans it's mostly them anyways it's most of them sitting right here with this image oh this can never happen in america because they never had to go through it black people been through shit like this we have we have black neighborhoods that have literally been bombed we know shit like this can happen you're not talking about us <laughs> you're not talking about us y'all motherfuckers don't even know stuff like that because y'all don't listen to black people in the first fucking place and then two it's all it's okay to criticize white people outside of america too it's okay to criticize white people outside of America. We don't always have to say America this and America that, rah, 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 about some issues that's happened worldwide. If we talk about something that specifically happened in America, okay, we can specify America. But every time y'all come criticizing the West, somehow it's always an American problem as if white Europeans don't have the same mindset. Like, as evidence when it came to Russia blowing the fuck up out of Ukraine, these motherfuckers on the news talk about some. I never imagined this happened in Europe. I never imagined this happening in Europe. I imagined this happening in a black or brown country, but never in Europe. And after y'all were criticizing for a little while, and after that, y'all had nothing else to say about it. Like, nah, criticize these niggas too. That's why they be on here trying to tell my black ass, talking about some, yeah, America, America's killing your people. America's doing this. Like, nigga, I know. You only know this because my people's told you this. Like, touchable. Like, no one can take that from you. But that's far from the truth, right? How many communities... Bro, she is saying the truth. Like, I already knew this shit, and I be talking about this every couple months in case, like, I get new people in here to keep them touched up and to remind old people. This gentrification shit is real, bro, and they do it every fucking day. And if you black and brown, then you already fucking know that they've literally destroyed our towns, our cities, our fucking countries to build what they want on top of it all in the name of consumerism. But, bro, so where I used to live was considered, like, average middle class, right? Then we moved over here when I was, like, 14 or 15. And this was considered the burbs for real. Like, every time I would mention it to somebody, they're like, oh, you live in the burbs. Like, why you mean white people? I'm like, I guess. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I say that was, like, like, almost six to eight. That was, like, eight years ago. You feel me? So, within the last six to eight years, bro, when I first moved here, they had two gas stations, a pizza shop, and a bar. 
within the last six to eight years, they've built apartments, a hotel next to the apartments, a Menards, a Sheets, a Bojangles, and two warehouses. Two big ass fucking warehouses, bro. And mind you, the people, the farm, the people who owned the farm, they owned all that land. They owned it all, bro. And then their shop burnt down. Their farm, I mean. And um, I think that's when they started selling their land. Or they might have started selling their land before the farm burnt down. But then they really started selling it when the farm burned down. But I think towards the end, the government just started taking the rest of it and shit because... Like, they were selling shit out of that burnt-down farm, bro. I was like, why wouldn't you keep some of this land? You know? I don't know. But they did say they was ready to retire and just go. And I'm like, I get that, bro. But you just, like, you handed all that land to the wrong people. And now we got all these fucking shops. Like, I remember just being, like, acres and acres of fucking field. I would go sit in it sometimes just to clear my head. now... There's a fucking gas station there, bro. Like, me and the apartments next to us is the cheapest that I've seen in a while. Like, we're the last of a dying breed. The apartments on this side of me, twelve to sixteen hundred dollars, I believe. Fourteen hundred at the cheapest, I think. Twelve to fourteen, but I think it's sixteen. Shit's getting crazy. Y'all, y'all think it won't happen to us. We're two fucking kicks away from being like Palestine, bitch. Americans kind of look at what's happening in Palestine and in the Middle East and they think to themselves. I hope you're not talking about black people and indigenous people and Mexican people because it happens to them. They know why it's feel like that's why we rally behind them because we actually know what that feel like. Hopefully you're talking about s some other demographic of people not black people and some of poc people because a lot of people a lot of foreign experience it so be mindful how you speak and what you say because black people and indigenous people and mexican people and most of the foreigners that's not from america experience it and African American experience them. Well, communities have been completely rooted out because hedge fund billionaires wanted to buy up their obligatory go watch your video, but yeah, you know that one movie where the billionaire tries to buy up a whole neighborhood so that they can turn it into a parking lot mall or whatever? Uh you know, the inciting incident of every movie of the past forty years basically. Yeah, well, that's not just a trope. It's based on something that actually happens, except instead of a plucky protagonist getting the neighborhood together to run the mean old billionaire out of town, usually what happens is the billionaire will harass the crap out of anyone that doesn't um, immediately accept their offer, and they'll harass them with means including, but not limited to, invoking eminent domain. Look it up, it's in the Constitution, until they get... A fraction of what their house was valued at, the billionaires get richer, and we all lose access to affordable amenities and rights. You're not safe from the beast just because you're in its belly. Americans kind of look at what's happening in Palestine and in the Middle East, and they think to themselves... Go watch her whole video because it's full of really great stuff. Um, but it touches on some things I've been processing, um, just rattling around in my head over the last few weeks, and that is this. I see the Israeli government and the United States government as two sides of the same coin of narcissism, one being overt, Israel, and the United States being the covert narcissist. Meaning everything that's happening um, in Palestine by the occupation of Israel is very in your face, right? It's brutal, it's unapologetic, it is blatantly racist, it is clear apartheid, it is massacres and, you know, um, false and unjust imprisonments and separate legal systems and all of those things. And it's in your face. You cannot deny it. Now, we still are trying, not we, but many, especially the United States government wise, are trying to justify it and, and come up with some excuses that just don't hold water. Um, but it's in your face. In America, we, a lot of us are lulled to sleep by the fact that 
we are under much of the same oppression, but it's very sterile and it's very covert. So we have freedom of movement. We can move about our, our you know, country as we please for the most part, unless you have house arrests or whatever. <clears throat> um, we can move from state to state. Now, many of us cannot afford to move state to state, but technically we can. Technically, we can buy a home, even though the home prices and the house prices are beyond m many of us at this point. But technically, we can buy a house and we can buy land. Technically, we have a justice system that's supposed to work, right, on paper. But it's very racist and it's very unjust and it's also very classist, as you'll see. So it's not just racist, it's classist as well. And America really thrives and depends and runs on racism. It always has racism and classism because as long as the white people feel like that they're safe, even if they don't have any money, any land, any power, any of that, they can point to people of color and say that they think they're better than them. And this might sound crazy, but I'm just saying out loud what's going on behind the scenes, right? Because that's literally what our government has done to us is try to make Think of all the white people who, um, in, you know, in very, very poor areas who have voted religiously for Trump, who has done nothing for them because he doesn't like poor people. He doesn't like dumb people, but they they would lay down their lives for him because he's made them think that they're better than someone else. And as long as we think that we're better than someone else, then we think we have some sort of power or some dog in the fight when the reality is we're all in the same situation, right? It's just more sterile and it's just more covert, but it depends on racism. So our justice system is incredibly biased and our government is incredibly biased. Now, most people in power have the wherewithal to say the horrible racist things behind closed doors that occasionally get leaked and then they make some fake stupid apology. Um, but in Israel, they're just, they just say it out loud. They just say it with their full chest and just expect everybody to go along with it. It's the same thing here. It's just done more quietly and it's more sanitized and sterilized. But we're, do, we're living the same experience. We have women of color who are dying in childbirth because they're not getting the same kinds of treatment that white women do. White women are dying in childbirth too because our healthcare system is horrible, but black women specifically and minorities are dying at a higher rate. This is insanity. We're supposed to be living in one of the greatest countries in the world and our women can't even be able to safely give birth. We have the issue with Roe v. Wade that's going on, which is incredibly horrific and also incredibly racist. We've got issues with housing. We've got issues with um, redlining. We've got issues with our health care in general. We've got issues with our education. All of it thrives on racism. It just runs a little bit under the radar so that the white people of the United States feel more comfortable that they're not racist. But it's the same beast. I hope this makes sense. Just think about it. So this is all I got from this video and first of all I am going to say that uh, you see why I keep saying that CROT is very important because uh, it teaches people uh, the skill and tools to think critical about power dynamics. It is very important, you know, and a lot of people are very selfish and really do not care about anything happening, probably like a uh, the way it is happening right now some of them do not care not until it happens to them but this is more like you know uh this is more like uh what has happened to black people it is what happened to black people when you talk about tulsa oklahoma you talk about rosewood right this is exactly what she is talking about but then when black people tell them something when black people say something, it is not valid, except when other people say it, it is valid. And uh, when black people are telling them to listen, they don't listen, not until it is on their doorstep, and by then it is too late. But this has been what black people, they have, they've been screaming about it, they've been talking about it, they've been saying about it, and... Um, it's just really, uh, I don't know, but uh, it's just really crazy how, like, you know, nobody cares. Whatever happens to black people, what black people are going through, 
what is happening to them when they speak up they don't care not until the same thing black people has been hammering on happens to them that is when they will turn back to say that uh, this is this this is uh, that but it's been out there they've been saying it they've been talking about it you know so they keep testing us you know and uh they keep trying to know if they are gonna react what are they going to say what is gonna happen and also uh mexicans am i correct also has is he mexicans i can't remember but when i remember i will tell you because like you know it has also happened to them and uh sometimes people really have to learn from people's mistakes yes you have to learn from people's mistake because if you do not learn then that is your problem not our problem and then when it happens it start happening what the black people have been saying all this way if it starts happen do not call black people black people or involve them yeah that reminds me the indigenous has happened to black people and indigenous people right so yeah capitalism got to go and uh, not until uh justice is uh, or not until everybody wakes up like you know like the last woman said uh medical appetite and all that like black people are mostly in danger like you know to experience medical uh appetite or something not like palm color people are not dying but they are not i don't know how i mean the measurement of it is mostly black people that go through it right and uh, even some of them experience all this but they will never come out to speak up from colored people why because they feel like you know it is it is the rich white man telling poor white man that their pro black people are their problem you know they will still wake up and vote against their own interest and then wake up eventually to come out to call black people to to, to uh, support them or to speak up for them it is crazy how black people will speak up when something is happening to them and also come to speak up when something is happening to you uh you all really don't get it see you all in my next video bye for now